Hi everyone. So today, instead of talking about Hinduism like I usually do, and I mean for the last few videos and some few videos and stuff, I will be talking about Islam for a change. So recently, just a few days ago, there's been this huge riot. Uh, these Muslims, uh, some of the Muslims in India in the city of Bangalore, uh, rioted because. Um, relative a nephew of a certain politician made a facebook post which supposedly insulted their prophet muhammad so if you know anything about islam you know that muslims basically revere prophet muhammad because he is supposed to be the last prophet the perfect ideal man the messenger of god the messenger of allah and so basically this is what happened he posted something which offended many muslims and the muslims rioted and i'll be covering the news on atheist republic later this week but for now i just wanted to make clear some things about islam like where the muslims rioted in the correct side uh, was the post fine and everything like that so here's what i have to say so now the post I went ahead and checked, it wasn't actually a post, it was just a comment and the comment suggested that Muhammad the prophet of Islam was a pedophile. So is this correct? Like yes, yeah, if a man whom um, this huge community of people revere suddenly is called a pedophile, it's obvious that the community would get offended. But if this is true, like if Muhammad is a pedophile, then it's a fact and you cannot really shut down facts. And if it's factual, there's nothing wrong with it. And the people, if they got offended by it, then it just shows what kind of man they revere and what kind of ideologies they revere. So here's the thing. I, Muhammad, uh, according to Islamic scriptures and everything, was indeed a pedophile. So now the story goes like this. One of Muhammad's wife, Aisha, was really, really young. She married Muhammad when Muhammad was 50, while she, Aisha, was just six years old. Yes. And, but wait, they didn't like consummate the marriage. They didn't go ahead with everything with sex of course no no that's not what happened when she was six muhammad had muhammad consummated marriage when i should turn to nine now yes this statement might offend many many muslims but there are several muslims all around the world who defend muhammad who justify his actions which shouldn't be justified at all but there are a lot of Muslims who say this information is false and it has been tampered with. This is not what the Islamic scriptures say. So I have prepared some Islamic scriptures verses from the Hadiths to show you what they actually say. Now the scriptures I have got here are from the Hadiths, not the Quran. So there's this misconception among many that Muslims just follow the Quran while they actually follow several books called the Hadiths and even the laws in Islam the, like the Sharia law and everything these laws come from the Hadiths so I have got these Hadith verses here so the Hadith I got here is the Sahih al-Bukhari now Sahih al-Bukhari is one of the Qutub al-Sitta or the six books referring to the six major Hadiths so this is these hadiths like the sahih hadiths are considered authentic by the majority the vast majority of the muslims all around the world there's no controversy about it the word sahih in them literally means true or authentic so that's that and here's the verses sahih al-bukhari verse 58 to 34 narrated aisha the prophet engaged me when i was a girl of six years we went to Medina and stayed at the home of Bani al-Harith bin Khazraj. Then I got ill and my hair fell down. Later on, my hair grew again and my mother, Umruman, 
came to me while I was playing in a swing with some of my girlfriends. She called me and I went to her, not knowing what she wanted to do to me. She caught me by the hand and made me stand at the door of the house. I was breathless then. And when my breathing became alright, she took some water and rubbed my face and head with it. Then she took me into the house. There in the house, I saw some Ansari women who said, best wishes and Allah's blessing and a good luck. Then she entrusted me to them and they prepared me for the marriage. Unexpectedly, Allah's apostle came to me in the forenoon and my mother handed me over to him. And at that time, I was a girl of nine years of age. So this verse clearly proves that she was six when they got engaged or married and it was consummated when she turned nine. Now that verse doesn't exactly say that marriage was consummated when I should turn nine. So I've got this another verse for you, which is Sahih al-Bukhari verse 58 to 36, narrated Hisham's father. Khadija died three years before the Prophet departed Medina. He stayed there for two years or so and then he married Aisha when she was a girl of six years of age. And he consummated that marriage when she was nine years old. It's literally in this verses that Muhammad married her when she was six and he consummated the marriage when she was just nine. Now there are other verses which also prove that this is true like I have two of the most popular like two of the Sahih Hadiths I quoted just two of the Sahih Hadiths to say to state that these this assumption about Muhammad is completely true it's mentioned in Islamic scripture but there are other Hadiths in Sahih Al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim because these are the Sahih Hadiths so I mentioned them and it's just horrible but there are people who justify these actions. For example, some people say, oh, it was just the culture back then. Like, yes, we are today, we won't see it as right. But back then in medieval Middle East, it was all right. And so that's not true. Well, first of all, the reason why that's not OK is because they even if people did something which today we know is horrible back then it was not that it wasn't horrible it was the people that didn't know it wasn't horrible but today we know what they did was horrible was wrong and they should have avoided it first of all that's one reasoning but that can be like reputed by saying oh they didn't know so it's not really up to them but his thing Muhammad, they claim that Muhammad is supposed to be this ideal, perfect man, the messenger of God, the messenger of the all-knowing, all-loving, all-powerful God. And he's the ideal man the entire humanity should look up to. So yes, if you will hold such a man to a bit higher standards than the rest of the society back then, even during his time, even if it was the medieval Middle East, it just doesn't matter when you claim that someone is like this perfect ideal figure, you will hold them to really, really high standards. Now, there are lots of historical figures who did some horrible shit, but people still idolize some aspects of them. But there aren't many historical figures who people just say, oh, they are the perfect ideal man. No, that there are not many of them. Muhammad is considered as the perfect ideal man by billion it's over a billion like i think there's like a 1.8 billion population of muslims around the world so that's the number of people who revere this man so yes holding him to such high standards isn't really wrong it's completely fine now another reasoning the uh, of justification the muslims give is that oh back then in the middle east women grew a lot faster they started puberty and back then the culture was that like for whenever a woman a girl technically she's not a woman at that young but whenever they started puberty whenever girls started puberty puberty they are fit for marriage and that's why it was just the culture it wasn't about anything about morality and thing 
so that should be fine because there are lots of other cultures which practice the same child marriages thing and in today's society it is illegal but back then it was fine and then again there's uh, coming like you can again argue that Muhammad was is supposed to be this ideal perfect man so you should hold him to such high standards but ignoring that there are other things yes there were political marriages child marriages uh, where really grown up men married really really young girls which was horrible but it was just a thing but here's the thing girls were always married to older men when they started puberty and even muslims many muslims and other scholars would agree that yes when they started puberty now the average age range of a girl starting puberty right today is age of 9 to 12 and back then it wasn't very different to be honest and even then like Muhammad married Aisha when she was six just six so that's not really I mean she didn't start puberty then when she was six but even even then like even if they say oh no they started the middle um, there are Muslims who say the Middle Easterns back then and they started puberty really really young and some others say that yes but they consummated the marriage when she was nine not six so she would have started puberty when she was nine but here are the things i researched a bit and came across this menarch age for girls during different periods in history so for people who don't know menarch is basically the start of puberty for girls like the start of menstruation this is like the first menstruation arc means like the first so that's how we get it so this is the ages i got for menarch of girls during ancient rome it was 12 to 14 years of age during medieval europe it was 12 to 14 years of age in medieval middle east it was 12 to 13 years of age now as you can see like this study this is the study which the if i can i will link the document to in the description below but it clearly shows that the average puberty with the main arc age for girls was 12 to 13 in the middle east so yes when she was nine she clearly didn't start any kind of puberty she was not considered a grown woman even by medieval middle east standards now there are some verses in the hadiths which again show that why Aisha was not considered a grown woman even in the society Muhammad was in. Like people can still say okay Muhammad's society considered these women to be grown adults and they could be married off and whatever but that was not the case and we can get the proof from the hadiths. Now I've prepared a uh, different set of hadith verses to show that first of all Sahih al-Bukhari 73-151 narrated Aisha I used to play with the dolls in the presence of the Prophet and my girlfriends also used to play with me when Allah's apostle used to enter they used to hide themselves but the Prophet would call them to join and play with me now I don't think any grown woman in any culture would play with dolls with their girlfriends. Like that just doesn't happen. And when she's playing with dolls, it clearly shows that she is a child. She's playing with dolls and since it's Muhammad here, so yeah, they were already married, they were already properly consummated marriage, and this is just disturbing at the least. But one can again say, okay, it's just dolls. It doesn't mention anywhere that she was really young. And it's true, it doesn't mention it. But I think that just playing with dolls proves it that she was young. But if you're not convinced, here's another verse for you. Sahih al-Bukhari 62-163 Narrated Aisha The Prophet was screening me with his reader, garment covering the upper part of the body. While I was looking at the Eth Ethiopians, who were playing in the courtyard of the mosque. I continued watching till I was satisfied. So you may deduce from this event how a little girl who has not reached the age of puberty 
who is eager to enjoy amusement should be treated in this respect. There you go. This verse clearly it's this verse is narrated by Aisha as mentioned in the verse and she clearly just called herself little girl and clearly mentioned that she did not reach the age of puberty. Now the other argument and now I'm really really stretching it but there are still people who justify it saying okay even if she didn't reach puberty the society considered it's normal and like I've said you will still hold Muhammad to high standards considering he's the messenger of Allah but just let them give the benefit and still you can really really clear the doubt that the society did not consider that age as a grown woman because of the next verse Sahih al-Bukhari 48-805 narrated Urwa bin al-Musayyab al-Kama bin Waqas and Ubaidullah bin Abdullah about the story of Aisha and their narrations were similar attesting each other. When the last said what they invented about Aisha and the divine inspiration was delayed, the last apostle sent for Ali and Usama to consult them in divorcing his wife. Usama said, keep your wife as we know nothing about her except good. Buraira said, I cannot accuse her of any defect except that she is still a young girl who sleeps neglecting her family's dough which the domestic goats come to eat. Last apostle said, who can help me to take revenge over the man who has harmed me by defaming the reputation of my family? By Allah, I have not known about my family anything except good. And they mentioned a man about whom I did not know anything except good. The, the, the part in this verse that you have to notice is the part where Buraya said, I cannot accuse her of any defect except that she is still a young girl. Now, that clearly shows that when Buraya said that he cannot think of any defect in Aisha, which means Aisha is like a good girl, she listens, she obeys and everything like that. But, but he also mentioned this exception saying she is still a young girl. So even by the societal standards of that time, the environment and the people surrounding Muhammad and everyone, they still considered Aisha a young girl, not a grown woman. So th this clearly proves that even in the society back then, it wasn't really all that normal and they all just accepted it because they believed that Muhammad is the messenger of God and that's why he's the perfect man and he can do anything he wants. That is horrible. That shouldn't happen. Now, if you are still if you still want to justify this, these actions, it just goes to show what kind of mentality you have. And you it's sick. It's really really sickening it's a disgusting mentality for a 50 year old guy to marry a six year old i i can't i cannot even begin to imagine why would anyone ever justify this now this is not all muhammad here's another accusation against muhammad would be that he intentionally married aisha when she was that young because what when she was that young, she wouldn't understand many things. She wouldn't have much to say. She would just do what the adults make her do. So basically, that's that's basically how a child is. And they don't have like, um, they are not in the age of consent. Because Muhammad Islam doesn't care about consent apparently. Because the next verse says, Sahih al-Bukhari 8479 narrated Aisha. I asked the Prophet, Oh Allah's Apostle, should the women be asked for their consent to their marriage? He said, yes. I said, a virgin, if asked, feels shy and keeps quiet. He said, her silence means a consent. So this technically proves that if, if, the, if the woman remains silent, they should just take it as consent, which is not by the way, only yes, only yes means yes, no means no, don't know means no, maybe means no, anything other than yes means no. And when Muhammad is 
considered to be this ideal perfect man the messenger of god he should be expected to have such high standards but to be fair to many muslims who do not support this hadith there are several muslims who are really a french minority but even a minority of such a huge group of 1.8 billion it's still kind of a big population even if it's not that big there are still such people in the world so let's be fair to them and this muslim say that oh the hadiths are not real they are not authentic whatever they say only the quran is holy and there are these muslims even though even though the majority of the muslims follow the hadiths because the muslim rules the islamic rules come from the hadiths not the quran but there are this uh, people muslims whom uh, we call quranists and they think that only only the quran is holy one such organization is the quran sunnat society which is a quranist movement in india now my criticism of muhammad doesn't apply to these muslims because they don't even think that my current criticism doesn't apply to these muslims because they don't even think that the hadiths are real so these verses don't mean anything to them and there's nothing in the quran which suggests not to my knowledge which suggests that muhammad was indeed a pedophile but that's why my criticism doesn't go to those muslims but to anyone who wants to justify these actions of muhammad yeah you you have a really really disgusting mentality and it's really really sickening but yes with that is literally my explanation of the what happened why why muhammad can be considered pedophile in a certain context which is like taking this hadiths into consideration without the hadiths there's no evidence for that so there you go and also i want to, to say that criticizing religions should not be offensive because when we criticize ideologies when it, when we criticize old ideas that's when we as a society as a community grow up that has been the case throughout history even in the history of india when people like raja ram mohan roy and many others criticized old ideas and that's how we grew that's why uh, how we came to the modern laws and blasphemy laws are shared so Thank you for watching everyone. Until next time. Bye.